Welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to get started with Code Wars. So first, a simple Google search for Code Wars. And let's switch this camera. Code Wars. Get started. So it wants a email and password. Simply enlist. Now I'm going to um, it want it let's see, sure, save the password. It's inviting me to select a track, let's say backend web, and let's say learning to program, and let's say Java. Looks like JavaScript was already selected. We'll deselect that because I want to focus on Java in this video. Not interested in finding a bootcamp right now. I don't want the email. Save my training preferences. Oh, and well, this is actually easier than I was expecting. There used to be a thing where you had to solve a puzzle just to get in. I guess they've changed that, so this video turns out to be easier than I expected, but I will still show you a way to get started by going to practice, sort by, we're going to sort by, this is a way to sort by most completed. And this helps because you won't get stuck with ones that haven't been solved a whole lot. Um, let's see if I can type in Java to get to it, because I want to show you how to get started with Java. Status approved, progress all, difficulty, 8Q is the easiest, so that's a good place to start. And it's found 192 kata. Let's select multiply. And I'm sorry, I'll make this a little bigger. Description, this code does not execute properly. Try to figure out why. We're going to, is this one available in Java? I want to focus on Java in this video. Yeah, this one does go in Java, so you click train. Welcome to the Kata Trainer, a few tips to get you started. Attempt, this button will submit your code against the full, tests, the full set of tests needed to complete the Kata. Whereas the test button, this button will test your solution against the sample test. Most Kata will have provided you with some sample tests to get you going, while others will not, in which case some test documentation will be shown instead. If you care about using test-driven development, then the sample test section will be very useful for you. You are encouraged to write your own tests as you try to complete the kata as, if you, as you would if you were writing production code. And then finally, it has a note on production quality code. Some code warriors like to write cold golfed or creative clever solutions, but most try to write production quality code. After you have completed all the test cases via the attempt button, you will be given an opportunity to clean up your code so that it's code review ready. So, this code will not execute. Try to figure out why. Let's run a test and see what it complains about. Oh, of course. Semicolon expected. So, we simply add a semicolon. Test. and solutions test something. Apparently, they haven't given us any actual tests here, but if we wanted to, we could test this one, which, is, which, which should fail because expected and actual do not 
equal, but we can play with the test, a times b test, or it doesn't have arguments. Let's not go down this road. I'll just copy this out. The point is that the test runs, but when we attempt, it's going to run a further set of tests. Test associativity of multiplication. And then finally, you simply click Submit. And it's going to give us some tips on solution voting. So let's read, read that. Tips, solution voting. You can vote on other Code Warrior solutions to help uncover the best ones. There are two choices for voting. Best practices. Best practices are solutions that you think are a good combination of being maintainable and efficient. They may not be the fastest solution if the fastest solution involves overly optimizing the code in, the way, in a way that becomes hard to read. As for clever, clever votes are for solutions that you feel like are notable in some way, but not something you would expect to see in production code. It also is going to tell us, congrats on completing your first kata. Here are some tips for what to do now. Solutions. Each time you complete a kata, you will be shown the solution of other code warriors. This is a great way to pick up new tips and tricks. And in fact, there's a trick here that I'm going to discuss a little bit. Next kata, you can move on to the next kata by clicking this button in the top right corner. It will randomly select a new kata for you based, on, based off of your selected language and training routine. Your active training routine is found on the dashboard page if you want to change it. Train again. If the kata you noticed and is in another language that you know or are you interested in, try to complete it again in that language. Discourse. If you have something to say about the kata you just took, you can head over to the discourse section to talk about it. Let's talk about this solution that's come in from a couple of people. We have syntax that might not be familiar to you, but it's a ternary statement. So you have something that evaluates to a Boolean. And if that Boolean evaluates to true, you get this result. Otherwise, you get this result. So this is saying if a is equal to null or b is equal to null, just return null. Otherwise, return a multiplied times b. Notice that we didn't need this to pass the kata because it didn't test the possibility that a would be null. But I am going to give it a vote for best practices because it looks like a good idea to check that. OK. Finally, I want to say that this, let's move to the other camera. I want to say that this video is unofficially sponsored by Code Gym, and if you're looking for a place to learn Java, maybe if, if you didn't understand everything you're seeing in the kata on Code Wars, then Code Gym could be a good place to go. And to be transparent, I'm mentioning it partly because I have an affiliate deal there, which means if you like it and sign up and pay for it, I may get a little kickback. So thank you for that, and thank you for listening to me, and happy coding.